Welcome to today's reflective act of worship from Newcastle Cathedral. We hope you will find it helpful as we gather today from many different places, yet one in faith and hope. As God's people, we have gathered. Let us worship God together. Wherever you may be, try to find a still place, a safe place, a place where you can take a moment to pause in body, mind and spirit. Remember that there are many others, both near and far away, pausing and praying with you in this moment too. Let us pray. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Having stilled and prepared ourselves to hear God's word for us, let us listen to the Gospel reading appointed for today. Matthew chapter 12 verses 38 to 42 Then some of the scribes and Pharisees said to him, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. But he answered them, An evil and adulterous generation asks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the sea monster, so for three days and three nights the Son of Man will be in the heart of the earth. The people of Nineveh will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, because they repented at the proclamation of Jonah, and see, Something greater than Jonah is here. The Queen of the South will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, because she came from the ends of the earth to listen to the wisdom of Solomon, and see, something greater than Solomon is here. Remembering that the Word of God is living and active, let us now reflect on what God might be saying to us today through this passage of scripture. Today's reflection is offered by Canon Jean. Hello again. Earlier today, I was taking communion to someone in a care home. Before I went, I had to do a lateral flow test and put the information into my phone to show the care staff at the home that I was negative and to prove the result um, in order to keep me and everyone else safe. Without the proof, they wouldn't take my word for it. They needed to see it. It's a sign of the times. And there are signs of the building work at the cathedral is nearing completion as the porter cabins are being removed and disappearing from Cathedral Square, a good sign. There are signs telling us what to do and where to go. There are signs that help us get from A to B, though at times I can and do get lost, even with the signs, if I've misread and misunderstood them. Times when you go one way, even though your instincts are telling you to go the other, sat nav's good for that sometimes especially if it's a new road i've learnt at times not to trust it totally and to listen to my instincts life can seem so complicated especially just now that real decisions appear impossible so that instead of looking inside us we look for the signs outside today as the restrictions ease on all our lives, we now have to make our own decisions, do our own risk assessments based on the evidence that we can trust, not misinformation. 
It's time to take responsibility for ourselves and do the right thing to keep ourselves and others safe. Having faith in any decisions we make so that we might head in the right direction. In our Gospel reading today, signs are what the Pharisees are looking for, even though the evidence is there right in front of them. Prove it, they say, but Jesus is having none of it. Instead, he reminds them of Jonah, whose preaching led the people of Nineveh to change their lives and change direction. Jonah, the reluctant prophet, who initially caught the ferry in the opposite direction and had to an amazing escapade with a sea monster before he eventually does what God had asked him to do. Then giving the people of Nineveh an opportunity to change the direction of their life. This is the basic call of Jesus, of course, believing in the good news that I bring and change your lives, open your hearts. Jesus, someone greater than Jonah and even wiser than Solomon. Where is the wisdom in our decision making? Many of us can be fascinated by spectacular events and this is why this, what the scribes and the Pharisees want, a sign from Jesus, to prove that he possessed exceptional powers. But Jesus is not interested in superficial curiosity about himself. He's not a magician. Rather, he is God among them, mysterious and blessed. Many Christians look for a sign like miracles, voices from heaven, Mary's image on a rose petal, bleeding stigmata. Jesus points us away from spectacular signs. It is our faith in the person of Jesus that keeps us going. He points the Jewish men to faith and the perceptiveness of the women and Gentiles. Jesus insists that God gave us one sign, Jesus himself, who was proved right by rising from the dead. We might ask ourselves, how deep is my faith? Does it depend on dramatic things happening in answer to my prayer? Or do I simply and humbly place my faith and hope in the person of Jesus and unite my prayer with his so that all our decisions are taken carefully and prayerfully hopefully going in the right direction signs from God sometimes seem desirable and even reasonable to expect Jesus reminds us that if we want them we may be looking in the wrong direction. Pray that we may see and appreciate where God is already working in the events and relationships of all our lives. Having faith that we are going in the right direction. Take a moment Press pause if you want to reflect on what, if anything, struck you during today's reflection. Were there words of comfort? Were there words of challenge? And now, remembering that all are precious in God's sight, let us pray. Lord, we hold before you today those situations, dilemmas and decisions we would, we are perhaps tempted to ask for a sign in the midst of. We bring into your presence once more those who today are doubting, or for whom faith has become a cold and calculated sort of thing. 
Help each of us to remember your faithfulness, even when we cannot comprehend it, and the movement of your spirit when we cannot apprehend it. Lead us, we pray, Lord, in ways of gentleness and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, whom the grave could not hold, but who nevertheless endured suffering, desolation and loneliness for us and like us. Be alongside all who are waiting in difficult and uncertain circumstances. Shine your light in the darkness that takes and seems to keep hold of the people whom we know today are struggling the most. Bring freedom, we pray, to all those in any sort of captivity today. Christ, have mercy. Lord, we remember all who rise up in this, our generation, with words of prophetic wisdom. We pray for those whose cries are ignored or denied for all who risk their lives and their voice to lead us into a better way. Speak, we pray, Lord, your word into the hearts and minds of our politicians and all who are responsible for public health at this time. Into the lives of those who have become careless in the face of Covid and into each of our spheres of influence we pray that we may walk in your ways and be speaking your word to all whom we meet lord have mercy lord of all power and might the author and giver of all good things graft in our hearts the love of your name increase in us true religion Nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Let us dwell in the peace and protection of God, this day and always. Amen. <laughs>